the job is not over. It's never over. Uh, a lot of people, when they do any jump training or anything in life, to be honest, they always have a goal, right? There's always an end, an end goal to achieve. But what's really interesting about uh, jump training specifically is that you can't win at jump training, right? You can hit your goal, but to achieve the most success, you have to keep going. And this is a game you can't win. The objective of the game isn't to win the game, it's to keep playing the game, right? Alex Ramosi always says that. It's, a, it's an infinite game that we're playing. Um, so having said that, it is the day after I tested 50.5 inches, world record, officially measured and all that, all that good stuff. Uh, but we're right back at it, all right? Less than 24 hours later, we are right back in the gym, ready to go. The objective of today is to do a feel-good lift. Uh, we usually like to do these once a week, usually after a, a jump day. And the whole point of it is to recharge the battery. So we just spent the battery yesterday and we want to recharge it. And the objective is to feel even better after the lift and then even better tomorrow um, with the lift and then get some momentum going into the training week and start the, the hypertrophy cycle officially, right? So I just did, this was a deload week, an introductory week to the hypertrophy cycle, and, and I'm gonna be full in it starting on Monday. And it's gonna be a lot of pain and a lot of suffering uh, during that. As far as how my body feels, I actually feel pretty freaking good considering I just did a two hour session. My sessions normally, nowadays, are about an hour. Uh, the session yesterday was like two and a half hours. Um, that's always what happens when you have, you know, a big meetup dunk session with a lot of adrenaline and caffeine in your system. You usually end up dunking way longer than you should. Um, but overall, my body feels pretty good. If I were to do a full body analysis, uh, lower back a little bit sore from a million under both attempts, PFP under control, uh, my TFL, right, the IT band pain, uh, zero pain, knees all feel great. So overall feeling good. Uh, with the feel good lift, we're going we're gonna to keep the intensity very, 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 very low. Um, again, we're trying to recharge the battery. Uh, so keep the intensity very low, high reps, kind of in, in that hypertrophy range, around, around the eight rep range. Um, I'm probably going to do some like oscillating bottoms up front squat, maybe in that like half squat range, just oscillate where, the, where I don't feel the PFP. Uh, then we're gonna hit hamstrings with Nordic curls. I'm gonna do probably two by eight there. And then some abduction work. I'm thinking uh, banded um, abduction and then seated calf raise. Again, if you have PFP, uh, abduction work and soleus work, really beneficial for it. Uh, just side note, if any of you guys have that issue at all. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to film the top sets, even though they're not going to be very exciting. Um, this is the boring work, ladies and gentlemen. The boring work is 90% of what mo pushes the needle forward uh, to jumping higher. I know I could post plyometrics, max out lifts, uh, you know, dunking, and those are the things that get views, but the boring work, that is what actually pushes the needle forward and causes you to make progress. That's 90% of the training is the boring stuff. Um, so if you're watching at this point, you're a mother, I'm trying not to cuss, a mother freaking real one, all right? You, because this is the, the reality of the situation is that this is the stuff that matters. This stuff right here, the boring work, the, the, the day in and day out monotony of the training. The stuff, it's not fun at all. But what sets me apart from other athletes, right, that have trained to jump higher and haven't been in the game as long as I have or haven't, you know, jumped as high as I have, or made as much, specifically made as much progress. The thing that sets me apart is I never stop. 
I show up every day and I do the boring stuff every day, no matter what. So having said that, I'm going to get into some ISOs real quick on the feel good lifts. We don't really do as extensive a warm up. We just go ISOs to the knee extension work. So I'm going to do that and I'll catch you guys on the other side. All right. I'm now warmed up. Wearing the hat so I can front squat and you guys can still listen to my heavy breathing. Uh, yeah, keeping it light. As you can see, there's 135 on the bar. I'm doing slow front squat sets of eight, building up to a top set, to two top sets of eight reps here. Let's get it. Recover a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Last night, I ingested a lot of a lot of poison. The poison that the whole world is addicted to. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about alcohol. Whew. which I don't do very frequently. And I always regret the next day. Whew. Whew. So I think that's a huge reason why I feel freaking horrible today. But the thing is, like when you have a, an outlier day in terms of performance, that's expending your body's preparedness. So it is to be expected that the next day is gonna be bad. Like if you think, I, I explained this, I, I wrote a periodization, well, a strength training masterclass for, uh, for my THP clients, my one-on-one -on -one clients. And when I was doing the research for it, I was studying basically like how, adaptation occurs, right? The whole point of training is to spur on adaptation. You have an organism, in our case, it's the human body, and there's, an, and there's the environment, right? So if you think back to like, like th think of an animal, a cheetah, right? A cheetah has to sprint every single day in order to catch its prey. So the body adapts in order to make it as good as possible as sprinting and to be able to sustain that every single day, right? The whole point of training is you have a goal for us that's jumping higher. So you have to subject the organism, AKA the human body, to an environment that is conducive to jumping higher. So how do you do that? You overload the, the, the organism. You subject it to a load it's not used to so that it can adapt to its environment. Your brain, it doesn't know the difference between jumping higher or distance running. Your brain is just it's trying to survive. Your body in general is trying to survive. So when you train, you overload the body to the point where your brain's like, hold up. This dude's about to die if we don't change something. So it's, it stimulates adaptation. Boom, your muscles get bigger, All right? in terms of hyper, if you're training for hypertrophy, which we're doing right now. Um, rate of force development, right? Okay, let's teach this organism to become neurally more efficient, to, to uh, produce force more quickly, right? So that this organism can survive. That's the whole point of training.
But in the short term, that's long term. In the short term, when you train, your preparedness goes down, right? Your body's not fit. So like a day like yesterday where I PR'd 50.5, I've hit that level of vertical maybe five times in my life. My body's like freaking in need of immense help, <laughs> All right? My preparedness is really down, but I'm gonna adapt. And that's why actually plyos and jumping every day and that type of thing helps so much because they self-intensify. As you get better at jumping, as your technique gets better, you overload your tissues and then your body adapts, you jump higher. But I'm rambling. <laughs> I am putting off doing this last set. So let me, let me get this in real quick. I hope you guys like my, my little rants comment if you like the rants, that way I don't feel crazy. I do not feel like training. So while I set this bar up for Nordics, on the point that I was talking about, right? I'm trying to maintain vertical, right? In order to just even maintain my vertical, I have to continue training because I have to continue subject subjecting my body to that oh, quote unquote harsh environment. That's why I mentioned this in a previous video and I've, I've written about this too in my newsletter. Uh, which by the way, if you wanna get, I write a daily newsletter, free tips. Go to the, the link in the description, sign up for the course. When you sign up to the course, you put your email in, you're gonna be subscribed to the newsletter once you do that and you get a bunch of free programs and stuff, but I've written about this. As you become more advanced as an athlete, the load needed to retain your fitness becomes way higher. Like, the weights I need to be hitting in order to just maintain my vertical are loads that three years ago would have destroyed me. Like this workout, for example, two days or three days ago now, but two days before I tested my, my vertical yesterday and I PR'd, I did two sets of eight squat at 315 and built up to a heavy power clean single of 295. And I came out of it fresh, feeling like a million bucks, right? If I would have done that same workout three years ago, it would have decimated me. That would have been um, a load that would have like spurred on adaptation. Right now, that's a load for me to retain performance, retain strength. And possibly not even, it might be a detraining load. So there's detraining loads, which is a load you impose on your body where your fitness is gonna go down. There's retaining loads, which is a load where you're gonna maintain performance. Retaining loads are really good for like in-season training. Um, my bad, I'm trying to get this weight out of here. And then, there are, there's overloading your body, which is what, what our goal is with, with training, is to overload the body so that we can keep making progress. So, right now, a feel-good lift, or even a deload week is a perfect example. In a deload week, 
that's a, a D training load technically. But when you, if you've been training really freaking hard for a long period of time, oh, there, this is what I was looking for. If you've been training really freaking hard for a long time, and then you subject your body to a detraining load, in the short term, depending on how long you were overloading your body for, that's where super compensation occurs. That's where adaptation occurs. You allow your body to adapt. And that's where the magic happens. So that's what happened to me this last week. My deloads is everybody else's regular. Technically, my deloads is harder than most athletes' regular training to adapt. But that's what happens is you get better and better. All right. Let's hit these Nordics. By the way, this is an example of a setup for Nordics. At home setup or at the gym. I'm just going to do 10 here. I'm going to keep my intent really low on these. Always got to keep the goal in mind for the session. So right now, I'm thinking, what's going to make me feel better tomorrow, more recovered, while still maintaining some semblance of fitness, and go into the week feeling great, right? I know when Monday hits, if my body feels great, I'm going to crush that training week. Probably superset this. It was good. My nephews just got here. All right. Final set of this. I'm actually supersetting this with Ben Walks. You're going to be in the YouTube video now, Jada. <laughs> You can be if you want. Right. So I'm supersetting this with bent walks. And then uh, I'm going to hit seated calf raise, get some soleus work. Nathan's here too. Okay. All right, so that was the last set of that. Now we're gonna finish with band walks, which I really like for abduct abductor work. See how fucking, how, I mean, oop, my first cuss word of the series, but look, just bend that thing over like th two times, hit a lot of resistance in there. You can do it, I believe in you, Jaden. <laughs> <You'll never know. laughs> so I'm doing a uh, two by 10 on these. These burn, yo. Call these the insta thought workouts. That booty. Ah, damn. Whew. All right. Now we're going to do single leg standing calf raise. I don't feel like setting up seated calf raise. It's good, Nathan. So I'm just hitting these two by ten. Again, the the point of today isn't to sprawl on adaptation. It's a feel good lift. Just trying to stimulate the tissues a little bit, every muscle group. 
That way by Monday, I feel like a million bucks. So that was one set. I just go straight into the other set. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and last one. Three. Calves, by the way, is one of the most neglected body parts. I like to hit them heavy as hell, with frequency, no weakness in the body. But that's my feel good lift. I hope you guys enjoyed that. This is, again, the, the boring work that is 90% of the training. Uh, it's good. Um, like always, sign up for coaching, thpstrength.com. Best coaching on the planet. Let's get it. I'll see you guys Monday. Don't skip training. <laughs>